Good morning. We are learning Masech, Masech Sirnuvin, chapter 3. The name of the chapter is Bakod Ma'avin, and uh, holding in page Lamed Test 39, 39A1. The Medina. person may not stroll on the Shabbos and Yom Tov towards the gate of the city, so he can enter the bathhouse right after Shabbos. Hodel Bey. Then Hodel Bey, he would retract. He would have retracted his assertion above that the permissibility of the renewal of an Eruv depends on whether the renewal requires the declaration or not. This Baisa prohibits minor acts of preparation even when no speech is involved. So the Gemara says, V'loi, second, let me tell everyone that we are on. V'loi, but this is not so. Shom Aleva, V'loi Adobe, Rabba did in fact hear this Baisa and still did not retract his position. Hosom Mechacho Milso, there in the case of the Baisa, it is evident to onlookers that he is preparing for tomorrow. A person would not walk to his field or to the gates of his city unless his intention was to prepare for after the Shabbos. Even though his intentions were not verbalized, they are understood and therefore the very act of walking is considered a forbidden act uh, of preparation. Here, when a person goes outside the city, it is not evident. If he is a rabbinical student, he will say that the preoccupation he studies led him unknowingly to the location of the Eruv. We will say that he lost his, his donkey and is searching for it. Since, to, uh, since travel to the site of the Eruv is not an overt act of preparation, meaning obvious act of preparation, just with somebody walking, it's not an obvious act of preparation that he wants to do something right after Shabbos. Maybe he's just walking. What's the whole idea? If somebody walks to the edge of the city, he said it's, it's prohibited because people will say that he is uh, planning to go to the bathhouse bath or fix his field or things like that, fix the, the fence, fix the book. So he said it's not overt act of preparation. It is permitted provided that no verbal declaration is involved. If he made an Eruv with his presence on the eve of the first day, he may make an Eruv with his presence on the eve of the second day. If he made an Eruv with bread on the, on the eve of the first day, he may make an Eruv with bread on the eve of the second day. If you made an Eruv with bread on the eve of the first day, you may make an Eruv with, with his presence on the eve of the second day. Why? Because so if you made an Eruv with his presence on the eve of the first day, he may not make an Eruv with, with bread on the eve of the second day, because one may not initially make an Eruv with bread on Yom Tov for the Shabbos since the original Eruv was with his presence. The designation of bread on the eve of the second day constitutes a new Eruv and requires a verbal declaration of residence. It therefore is considered a forbidden act of preparation. So we're holding in 39A1 in the right column. So wait a minute. Okay, so okay, uh, the, uh, before Shabbos, you, got to, you go out and you put the, put the meal, which includes bread pots. Then, okay, so, okay, 
they, question if he needs to do it the second day. Now he says, no, you can only do it by, then he says, you go out there and you say, I want this to be there for the second day. Why, why, why is it a problem? Because we may not initially make an Eru with bread on Yom Tov for the Shabbos. So since the original Eru was with his presence, he physically was there, the designation of bread on the eve of the second day constitutes a new Eru. And, that's an, that's a, and uh, requires uh, a verbal declaration of residence. That this, that's, that would be his residence on the second day. He has to say it. This is going to be my Eruv, and therefore it would be my, re my residence. Yes, it is therefore considered a forbidden act of preparation. However, when the original Eruv was with bread, he is permitted to make a new Eruv with his presence because of the renewal of an Eru by means of his presence does not require verbal so declaration. So he goes there, or stands there, and walks back, he did it. Okay, cool. Or, I mean, uh, according to Ritva. The Gemara con contrasts the last clause of Rabbi Yudas ruling, which prohibits the making of a new Eru with bread, with the second clause. I guess second declaration. Okay. Second clause. If you made an Eru with bread on the eve of the first day, you may make an Eru with bread on the eve of the second day. Does not the designation of bread on the eve of the second day require a verbal declaration? And therefore, should be forbidden for it constitutes preparation. Amar Shmuel Shmuel said the second Eruv must be made with the same bread that was used for the first Eruv. Since this bread was already designated as Eruv bread from the day before, so no, no new verbal declaration is required on Yom Tov. Omar Ravashi, Ravashi said a precise reading of our Mishnah supports Shmuel's explanation. The Kesani for it was taught in the Mishnah, Ketza Doisit. What should, be, what should he do? If he wishes to maintain his Eru for both days of Shabbos and Yom Tov and avoid the possibility of the new Eru being lost on the first day. You should bring it, the food, for the Eru to the desired location on the eve of the first day. Hmm. And stay with it until it is dark. Okay. And then he should take it and go. And on the eve of the second day, he should bring the food back to the same location. And stay with it until it is dark. And eat it. He may eat it and go since the Mishnah advises to bring the Eru food home you know, to protect it so that it can be used on the following evening, it is clear that one must use the same food for the second day's Eru. Abaye and Rabba Bar Rav Hanin had challenged Rabba above and disregarded or disagreed with his notion that an Eru may not be renewed on Yom Tov for the Shabbos. They hold that the renewal of an Eru does not constitute forbidden act of preparation and is permitted under all circumstances even when a declaration is required. The Gemara now seeks to know how they will explain the fact that our Mishnah specifies the Eruv be renewed with the same bread which requires no verbal declaration. So this is assuming that you end up going into Shabbos. Yes. The Rabbanon and the Rabbis Abaye and Rabba Bar Rav Hanin, who permit an Eruv to be renewed even with different bread, how do they explain the Mishnah? Perhaps there in the Mishnah, the Tana merely gives us some good advice. If the food from the first Eruv is preserved for the second day, he will not have trouble himself preparing another batch of food, but in fact it is unnecessary to use the same food twice. The previous Mishnah discussed whether 
consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are classified as two distinct periods of holiness. The following Mishnah deals with the unique case of the two days of Rosh Hashanah. Oh, wow, look at this. We got that in the Mimer. If, one, if on the eve of Rosh Hashanah there was concern that the preceding month of Elul might be extended and Rosh Hashanah would last two days, one wishes to travel beyond his tchum on both days, each day in different direction should observe the following procedure. Let's look at number eight. During most of the Talmudic era, the beginning of the month, Rosh Hashanah, was not fixed by a static calendar, but by the actual sighting of the new moon at the beginning of each month. Witnesses who saw the new moon would report their observation to the, to the base din, who would then declare the new month. The first day of the month could be either 30 or 31 days after the start of the previous month and it could not be predicted beforehand on which day it would fall. In the land of Israel, this did not cause any problem with the observing of festivals on their proper dates since, with the exception of Rosh Hashanah, they occur in the middle of the month, by which time the exact day proclaimed as Rosh Chodesh was already known throughout the land of Israel. The diaspora, however, observed two days of Yom Tov, as we do today, because communications in those days were too slow to assure that transmission of the information regarding the day of Rosh Chodesh by the middle of the month. The festival of Rosh Hashanah did present a problem even in the land of Israel as much as it falls on the first day of the month of Tishrei. Even the residents of the land of Israel could not be informed in time of the correct date to celebrate Rosh Hashanah. And even those living in close proximity to the Beisdin, the residents of Yerushalayim, had no way of knowing on the previous evening whether the following day would be merely the 30th of Elul, the month preceding Tishrei. If witnesses did not come to testify the following day or the first of Tishrei and Rosh Hashanah, in the event that witnesses do testify, the, ce the, um, the celebrate both the 30th and the 31st days following Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Chodesh Elul as Rosh Hashanah. So the biggest issue they had is they could not notify people on time. The right. people of Israel, and how much more so the people outside of Israel. Right. So like we say, the, when, on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, we say the beginning of the Tehillim. We don't say the end of the, end of the uh, like every other month, if it's a two-day Yantav, a two-day Rosh Hodesh, the first, it's the third because uh, because Rosh Hashanah Elul has a uh, Elul has thirty days. How many days it has Elul? You got the calendar. Here. Elul has twenty-nine days. Right. So in this case, okay, and if it was a one-day Rosh Hodesh, we would say that the last ten to hell him. Uh, Elul is officially one day Rosh Chodesh. I mean, Tishrei is one day Rosh Chodesh. So therefore, we're saying all, we're finishing Rosh Chodesh. Uh, well, Rosh Hashanah is just two days. But there's no really Rosh Chodesh on Rosh Hashanah because it's it's not just Rosh Chodesh. It's also the the, the head of the year. All right. So we're saying the last ten on uh, on a Friday, and then we go start with number uno on on uh, Rosh Rosh Hashanah. Oh, I'm just saying that it's different than the rest of the month. Well, you have four, I believe the Rambam writes, you have four months, we learned it also in the right. Gemara, that you have four months that are Choser in a year, and eight months that are Mole, which means that four months would be deficient, 
with only 29 days and eight months usually would be 30 days so eight times during the year you'll have two days of Shkodesh the 30th and the first and four months out of the year you'll have only one day of Shkodesh okay. so the, all the, the Mishnah discussing a situation where they determined the Rosh Chodesh by, by sight, by right. seeing uh, the, 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 the lights. They didn't the, have a, a planned calendar. Yeah, when I was in Eretz Israel, I saw where the mountains were that they were shining the lights and all that. So, the, so Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, there was a concern that the preceding month of Elul might be extended. Rosh Hashanah would last two days. One wishes to travel beyond his tchum on both days, each day in different directions, should observe the following procedure. When a person make two Eruvs on opposite side of the city. And he says, My Eruv for the first day is to the east. The second day to the west. For the first day to the west and the second day to the east. Either this way or that way. Now, Eruvi Barishin of Asheni Kivne Iri, my Eruv is for the first day, but the second day I'm like the residents of my city who did not make an Eruv. And then he, this way, by saying it, on the first day, he would like to choose whether he likes, whether he goes to west or east. Yeah. Or he can say, both days, I'm like the residents of my city, who did not make an Eruv. Rabbi Uda rules that since the two days of Rosh Hashanah are observed out of doubt, and in actuality, only one day is Yom Tov, and the other is a, is a, is a weekday, it is permissible to establish two different Eruvs for the two days. The rabbis, the sages, did not agree with Rabbi Uda. The sages rule that the two days of Rosh Hashanah constitute one continuous period of holiness. Therefore, only one Tehum may be established for both days. The sages in number 10, it says the sages take the view that the two days of Rosh Hashanah are not two days of doubtful holiness, but rather a single extended period of rabbinically ordained holiness. The reason for this will be given in the Gemara. Accordingly, it is forbidden to place two different Eruvs for the two days because that would be tantamount to establishing two Eruvs for one day, which is impossible, as we learned above. Very Omar Rabbi Additionally, Rabbi Uda said, A person may stipulate condition, a condition concerning a basket of tevil produce on the first day of Yom Tov, the first of the two days of Rosh Hashanah, and read it on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Similarly, uh, and similarly, an egg laid on the first day of Rosh Hashanah may be eaten on the second day. These two rulings are also based on the premise that essentially only one of the two days is Yom Tov and the other is a week. The sages did not agree with Rabbi Yehuda, for they hold that the two days of Rosh Hashanah constitute a single period of holiness. As it says in many places of our Rosh Hashanah, it's one long day. One who leads the prayer services. On the first day of, on the first Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah, one who leads the prayer services. says in prayer, fortify us, O Hashem, our God, on this day of Rosh Hashanah. Whether it is today or tomorrow, in the following day, he says, fortify 
O Hashem, our God, on this day of Rosh Chodesh. Whether it is today or yesterday. So Abidosa rules that Rosh Chodesh be mentioned in Rosh Hashanah prayers and the, con and the uh, conditional clause be inserted due to the doubt regarding its exact date. So if Rosh Chodesh, the first day of the new month, is today, fortify us today. If it is tomorrow, then fortify us tomorrow. But Lloyd Zohar the sages did not agree with Rabbi Dosa. The, the point of disagreement and the reasoning behind the sages will be explained in the Gemal. I think in actuality we don't mention Rosh Chodesh in Rosh Hashanah. You see Yalla but in the day of remembrance. I don't remember. I don't remember. Who did not agree with I'm a Rav, obviously. Rav said it is obviously. Tanya, why is it taught? The sages who disagree with Rabbi Lezer in the previous Mishnah and prohibit the establishment of different Tuchumin for consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov agree with Rabbi Lezer. Rosh Hashanah, Shev Rosh if on the eve of Rosh Hashanah was concerned that the preceding of month of Elul might be extended, Rosh Hashanah would last two days. One who wishes to travel beyond the Trum, beyond his Trum, on both days, each day in a different direction, may observe the following procedure. person may make two Eruvs on opposite side of Sidi Vemer and declare, Eruvi Vorishalemizach, my Eruv for the first day is to the east. Vashini Lamarov, and the second day to the west. Or vice versa, first day to the west, second day to the east. If he, if he wishes to travel beyond his cities to whom on only one beyond his city to whom on only one of the days, he may make one Eruv and declare Eruvi Barishan of Asheni Kivneiri, my Eruv is for the first day, but for the second day I am like the residents of my town. My city, my Eru for the second day, but the first day I'm like the residents of my city who did not make an Eru. Since only one of the two days is actually Yom Tov, it is acceptable to establish two different Tuchumim for the two days. However, Abiyasi prohibits the making of two different Eruvs for the two days. Omar and Abiyasi, Abiyasi said to them, do you not agree that if witnesses arrived at Mincha time or later on the first day to, te to testify they had observed the new moon, in which case the testimony is longer, long, no longer acceptable and Rosh Hashanah is definitely the next day, that nevertheless we treat that day as holy and also the next day as holy even though at that time it is known that the first day is definitely not the biblical Rosh Hashanah. The, rem the remainder of that day is still regarded as Yom Tov. In such a case, Rosh Hashanah is observed for two days, not out of doubt, but as one continuous period of holiness. That's what we're doing today. The, Rosh ah, the regular Yom Tov we celebrate two days out of the original doubt. Not that we have doubt today, but... Uh, Right. Original well, it comes to Rosh Hashanah is the only time that we celebrate two days because it's one continuous kedusha. Right, but like there's one. I, if we have to have a funeral, we could have it on the second day, right? If show. I don't think so. No. Never heard of. Never heard of anything like that. I was done. No. Okay. I 
I didn't hear it, but maybe you're right. I don't, I don't remember. Rosh Hashanah? I know they said it's yes, not that they have to know. The remainder of the first day is observed on Yom Tov only as a precautionary measure so that it is not treated lightly in subsequent years. However, it is not imbued with any inherent holiness. Therefore, the two days cannot be regarded as a unified period of Kedusha, of holiness. The Mishnah recorded the three rulings of Rabbi Yudha, all of them based on the premise that only one of the two days of Rosh Hashanah is essentially Yom Tov and the other is a weekday. The Gemara now demonstrates why it was necessary for Rabbi Yudha to give all three rulings. The discussion is introduced with a quote from the Mishnah. Additionally, Rabbi Yudha said, it is necessary if it would have informed if he would have informed us of only the rule pertaining to the Eruv of Rosh Hashanah, he might have assumed that only Behok Omar Rabbi Uda. In this case, Rabbi Uda expressed a lenient opinion. Mishum Deloyer, Kovid Midi, because nothing is done on Yom Tov itself. All preparations are made before and Aval Kal Kol, however, in the case of a basket of the basket of table produce, the Mirze Kemesak in Tivlo, where it appears as if he is rectifying the table on Yom Tov itself. And I might have said that Rabbi Uda agrees with the rabbis, the sages of our Mishnah, and prohibits the conditional designation of Turuma on Rosh Hashanah. And if he would have informed us of only these two rulings, of Eruv and the basket of table produce, we might have said that only in these two cases does Rabbi Uda rule leniently Mishum Delei Kalimik Zaralayu because there are no grounds for legislating against them as a preventative measure. Ava Beitzo Dei Kalimik Zarbo, however, in the case of an egg laid on the first day, where there are grounds for legislating against it, Mishum Peles Hanoishim, because of the law forbidding fruit that falls from a tree on Yom Tov, Mishum Mashkin Shezavu, or because of the law forbidding juice which issued from fruit on Yom Tov. A Mamoidul Rabbon, and I might have said that Rabbi Uda agrees with the sages and prohibits the egg even on the second day. Therefore, the Gemara concludes, it is necessary to teach all three cases. Tanya Kizadamarabiuda, how does one actually proceed in the performance of that which Rabbi Uda said? In a person may stipulate a condition concerning a basket on the first day, and eat it on the second day, if he had two baskets of tevel in front of him. Table produce, Emer, Emayim Chol Mohokash, if today is a regular day, is a weekday, and tomorrow is a holy day, tomorrow is sacred, tomorrow is Yom Tov, there's a Tuma, Zu. This one should be Teruma, the produce in this other basket should be Teruma for the produce in this other basket. If it's vice versa, Emayim Kodesh Mohokachol, if today is sacred and tomorrow is an ordinary day, Ain bit void clue, my declaration of is of no consequence. It is null and void, and the designation of Tuma should not be should not take effect. He thereby conditionally designates the produce in one of the baskets as Tuma and leaves it until the second day. The next day he says, if today is an ordinary day, take the zu. And the produce in this basket, which was con conditionally designated as Turuma yesterday, should be Turuma for the produce in this basket. And if today is sacred, Ein Bidvoi Kluma, declaration is of no consequence. It is unnecessary because the designation of Turuma already took place yesterday. He thereby designates the produce of one of the basket as Turuma. And he may eat the contents of the other basket, since one of the two conditional acts of designation was certainly valid. 
Rabbi Yaisi and Bechana Rabbi Yaisi and Bishnei Yom Tevishu Galuis and similarly Rabbi Yaisi prohibits this procedure even on the two days of Yom Tov of the Diaspora. The Gemara relates an incident relevant to the question of the two days of Yom Tov. Two Diaspora days of Yom Tov. Days outside of Eretz Yisrael. Ubar Tavid also Veresh Galus. A deer was brought on the uh, to the home of the Reish Galusa. Okay? Yeah, I got it. They caught a deer, they brought it before to the house of the Reish Galusa, the exiliarch. Right. and slaughtered on the second day of Yom Tov. Rav Nachman Rav Chizda Ochel, Rav Sheshis Lochel, Rav Nachman Rav Chizda Eight, Rav Sheshis said, not good enough for me, I'm not eating it. Not because he was vegetarian. He was not vegetarian. Right. He said, why? A Jew may not benefit from a forbidden labor performed on Yom Tov by a Gentile for a Jew. However, Rav Nachman Rav Chizda held that the vengeance the venison. the venison was permitted, I guess, the, the capture. It's the meat. The meat was, was the meat that was captured. No, they slaughtered, the, they shafted the deer on the second but day. But the meat was, the deer was captured on the first day. Right, by the, by the Goyim. So, oh, here's the hell that the venison was permitted, the meat was permitted because only one of the two days was actually Yom Tov. So, even if one were to assume that the day the animal was captured was a Yom Tov, it follows that the day on which they consumed the meat was not a Yom Tov. Rav Sheshis, on the other hand, regarded the two days as one continuous period of holiness, and therefore the opinion that the meat was forbidden for both days. Right. What am I going to do with Rav Sheshis, the Loyochil Bisro de Tavio, who is not eating the venison? venison. But how could I eat? The Sony Isi Isi has taught the following vice, which teaches that the two days of Yom Tov of the diaspora are regarded as one. Rav Mulai Isi Tony and others say that Rav Shishis phrased his response this way. Isi Tony Isi taught, following advice of Shishis that the two days of Yom Tov the Diaspora are regarded as one, and I and I should eat? Question mark. The advice referred to where Rav Shishis reads as follows: V'chein Rav Isi Oiser. Shemtev Shigalus. Similarly, Rav Isi prohibits this procedure of the conditional designation of Teruma, even of the two days of Yom Tov of the Diaspora, since E.C. Baisa confirms that Rabbi Yossi treats the two days as one continuous period of holiness, Rabbi Sheshis ruled that the venison could not be eaten until the termination of the waiting period after the second day. Amarav, my kushya. What difficulty does this by suppose to the opinions of Rav Nachman of Chista? Dilma Ochikomo. Perhaps this is what the by is saying. Vechen or Rabbi Yisi Eiser. Similarly, Rabbi Yisi prohibits this procedure of the conditional designation of two. Shnei Yom Tov Shalosh Shnei Vigaylo on the two days of Yom Tov. Rosh Rosh Hashanah observed in the Diaspora, Rabbi Yaisi extends his stringent ruling even to the two days of Rosh Hashanah observed in the Diaspora. He does not, however, extend it to the two days of Yom Tov of the Diaspora observed on other festivals. So if they did the same thing in the Sukkot, you could have a nice meal on the second day. Iochi. If so, the Baisa refers exclusively to Rosh Hashanah, the the Baisa's terminology, Shel Galuyas, of the Diaspora, is inaccurate. This implies that the very institution of the two-day Yom Tov is discussed 
in the Baisa applies only outside the land of, of Israel, which is not the case in, of Rosh Hashanah, which was sometimes observed for two days, even by those in close proximity of the Baisa. If the Baisa is discussing Rosh Hashanah, Bagoilomi Baalei, it should rather have said in the diaspora, implying that it deals with a Yom Tov, which is observed for two days in possible, in, in possibly both the diaspora and the land of Israel. But here the law is discussed as it applies in the diaspora. The Gemara resolves the difficulty posed by the Baisa to the opinion of Nachman and of Chizda. Omar Avasi Umay Kushi. What difficulty does this bias oppose to the opinion of Rav Nachman or Chista? Dilma Ochikomo, perhaps this is what the bias is saying. Similar, Rav Yaisi treated the prohibition of the two days of Yom Tov of the diaspora, Bishneum Tevish Rosh Hashanah. Like the two days of Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah. The Rabbon and the show in accordance with the rabbis who rule leniently. In the case of the two days, in case of the two day Yom Tov in the diaspora, obviously gives the same lenient ruling as the rabbis do in the case of the two days of Rosh Hashanah. It's amazing that we're dealing with Rosh Hashanah when it's just, right, about, it's just when around the corner. The it's great. Yeah. Look at 15. In the advice I quoted at the bottom of 39a, Rabbi Yossi and the sages disputed the case of the two days of Rosh Hashanah. Rabbi Yossi and the sages disputed the case of the two days of Rosh Hashanah. The sages took the lenient view that uh, may be regarded as two independent periods, as Rabbi Yossi contended that the two days are continuous. Rabbi Yossi considered in the case of the two diaspora days of Yom Tov festivals other than Rosh Hashanah, the lineage view is correct and the two days are regarded as separate. Rabbi Yossi had a reputation for erudite. Erudite. Sharp, sharp. Reasoning. Therefore, it is preferable to interpret the Baisa in this rather forced, forced fashion rather than accept its plain meaning according to which Rabbi takes the illogical view that even the two days of Yom Tov of the Diaspora are a continuous period. So according to him, that it's, it's one continuous period only in Rosh Hashanah, not on, on regular Yom Tov. Right. On regular Yom Tov, he would agree that it's a separate uh, right. Kedusha. Because it's in Chutz Oretz and it's Sveik of the Yom Tov. So the Gemara records a conversation that took place following the incident with the deer. Okay. Rav Sheshes didn't want to eat Ashka. Rav Sheshes the Rabbi Bar Shmuel. Rav Sheshes met Rabbi Shmuel. Omar Leit Oni Mar Midi Vikudushes. Did the Master teach any vice concerning the periods of holiness of the two days Yom Tov of the diaspora? Omar Leit Tanino. Rabbi Shmuel answered him, "We taught it in a white." Why Rabbi Yosi Yom Tov Shikaluyos? Rabbi Yosi concedes the case of two days of Yom Tov. That's for Omar Lei. I mashkach do if you meet Rav Nachman and Rav Chizda loy teimalu v'lei mid. Do not say anything to them about this brisa which refutes my view. It would it would be an embarrassment to me. Amar Rav Ashi ledid Yomor leAmeimar. Amemar told me personally. Over Tavio, that the deer, Loit Sude Itstid, was not captured. Ela Michusat Chum also. It was brought by Gentiles from outside Chum on the very day. Man Daocha Sova Bobish will saw the Mutar Lisolach. The one who ate said that if it's, if you're going, brought it to one Jew. It's permissible for another Jew to eat it, not for that specific Jew, but a oh. different Jew. Man de leochal sova called the osi vesh galusa aday to chulu abon osi. The one who did not eat held that 
anything brought to the home of the Rish Garusa is brought for the sake of all rabbis who regularly gather there. Yeah. Welcome to you. One halacha shortly.